everybody. Anders here coming to you live from Grand Rapids, Michigan at the Baking Steel Studio. Today we are making bagels. I did a round earlier this morning. These are everything bagels. They're amazing. Um, can't wait to share how we do this. Using our baking steel, we're going to go through everything from, from making the dough to shaping, fermenting, baking on the baking steel. Phenomenal. And I did everything so you can do any style you like. Um, we're going to do, so when we get to some questions, I'll have pauses throughout and I'll answer your questions on the on the chat. When I, um, when I have those pauses, if I forget, please don't forget, just type it right back in and I'll get to it. Uh, but today, doing bagels from Baking with Steel. And if you've been following us a little bit, we're going to make the dough first. Then we'll get into like some of the shaping and the fermentation. Talk about the oven because we've got a couple of different things going on. I'm going to do some movements, a lot more movements than typical. Um, inside my oven here, I've got two baking steels preheating at 425 Fahrenheit. I'm using convection. On my stovetop, I have um, some water that's been boiling because we know it's important to boil our bagels to get that nice crusty outside shell um, and then soft tenderness in the inside. I've got a little bit of baking soda and a little bit of honey in my water. That's, it's kind of simmering now. And the idea is to, to boil those for about a minute or two when we are ready to do that before we bake. But let's get first get into making bagel dough. I'm going to show you my top down view. Our dough. I'm using my baking steel dough container. This is bread flour. I've got 500 grams of bread flour. And I'm going to do is add my ingredients in. I'll tell you what goes in. I've got about six or seven grams of sea salt. So I dump that in. And I always like to have a whisk around and I whisk my salt in. I've got sugar. Now, people have used brown sugar. I'm just using the organic cane sugar here. I got about eight grams of sugar. I'm going to whisk this in. Again, skill level here is not very high. Since I'm using really nice organic bread flour. We prefer the bread flour. It's a, got a little bit more protein in it. And then my yeast, which is about one gram of yeast. I dump that in. I'm just kind of whisk it around. Now, all I'm going to do is I've got some water. This is a 24-hour dough, right? So I'm going to do some water next. I've got filtered water. It's 300 grams. And this equals about a 60% hydration. So it's a lot drier than our um, pizza dough. And now I'm going to do is just take like a spatula, and just kind of push it around, let the flour and the water hang out together. Let the flour absorb all that water, right? And I'll I'm going to need this for probably about maybe maybe a, a couple of minutes, right? And my need, I'm just I'm putting my hand in the flour and just kind of pressing it out so I get all the dry clumps out of here. And that's really it. I'm going to do this for a couple of minutes and I'm not going to spend my time doing this today on the, on the video, but you kind of get the gist. I kind of want to scrape the edges of the bowl and just kind of press, right? And eventually this is going to form one large mass of dough. You can kind of see it starting to formate now, formulate, I should say, right? You can see, and again, just scrape your edges I'm going to do a better job when I'm off of Zoom doing this than I would on Zoom because I don't want to bore you guys, but you get the idea. I'm going to do this for about two or three minutes in total. And now let me take a pause. You can see me out here again. So I've got my, um, my dough made, right? And I say this is a 24-hour dough because typically now I'm going to take this, I'm going to cover it just like this. I love these containers. <laughs> I'm going to cover this in the container. I'm going to leave it out at room temperature for 24 hours-ish, right? I'd like to, um, for me, 24 hours, all at room temperature. If I'm going to go longer than that, I can put it in the fridge after, like, say, 12 or 14 hours, still in the fridge for a day or two. But typically, for me, bagels, one day, ferment is awesome, right? So I made dough yesterday. The next step, what we do is we make our dough balls or bagels, right? So what I, how I do that is take about 100 grams of dough. I've got a batch here. 
I'm gonna just guess at 100 grams, okay? Here's a batch of the dough from, from yesterday. And all I'm gonna do now is ball it up. This is a little, probably a little bit big. Can we shrink it down just a little bit? I'm gonna show you how I do this. We can do an untraditional weaning. I'm gonna use the palm of my hand, like we do the English muffins. I'm gonna kind of do this cupping motion. And it's a little sticky, but that's okay. Maybe I put a little bit of flour in my hand. All I'm gonna do is press down and like turn like this, like this. Press down on my palm and turn. And as you can see, it's starting to form a ball. It just makes that a little bit easier, right? Now I've got this nice ball of dough, right? I'm gonna put that inside of my dough container, another container, and you can see, I did this, I just did this ball. I've been, I did these ones earlier today. You can see the, the light. I did these about two hours ago, actually like three hours ago. And now I'm gonna shape my bagel with one of these. So what we'll do is take my, my ball. I put a little, on my thumb, I'm put a little um, flour. I'm literally just gonna poke a hole in it, just like that. Poke a hole. And now I put my fingers in and just kind of do this rotation like that, boom. Right, and place these on a piece of parchment paper. Really simple, right? I'll grab another one and show you again how I do this. So there's my my ball that's been proofing for about an, a couple of hours. I poke a hole, just put my thumb right through it. I do it right in the center, and then I just kind of do this round, like kind of like this, right? And then I've got this nice. Beautiful hole in my bagel, right? I'm gonna do this to, to all my dough balls and make my bagels. Now let me take a pause. So now here. you've seen, I've shaped my bagels. I made the dough. I let it rest for 24 hours. I made my dough balls about an hour or two ago. Then I poke my hole in and I've got these beautiful, like, and I'll do one here. Let's do one more here since I got you guys. I'll do one from this point of view too. This is my ball. I just literally poke a hole in the center. And there's different ways of doing this, by the way. I'm just poking the hole, the poke hole method, which I love. Um, and that's it. That's my bagel. Place it here. I'll let these rest for about, you know, 10 or 15 minutes generally. But today we're in a pinch for time. So I'm going to do it a little faster. And now what I'm going to do is take my, um, my, make sure my water is boiling on my stovetop. Okay which it is, I'm gonna place these, I can do like, depending on the size pot, like two at a time in the water. I'm gonna boil them for one, I'm gonna drop them in right now. In fact, I'll take you guys over. Let's go for a ride with me. You can see what I'm doing. All right, so on my stove top here, you can see I've got my water. It's kind of simmering. I just place these in, boom. I'll do both here, two. I'll put my timer on for one minute. I'm gonna guess what that is. This is like a light, like a light simmer. I'm gonna do this for about one minute on each side. One minute on each side, and then what I'm gonna do? Sorry, all this. I got dough everywhere. <laughs> uh, I'll remove them from the um, from the water bath, and now is the time to season them if that's what we want to season. I'm going to flip these over now. In fact, let me show you how I do that. Just so you can see, I'm just going over my, to my water. I'm going to take my bagel and just flip it over like that, boom. Looks like I poked out by accident. And I'm going to do this for another minute. That's my bagel solution, again, I've got honey inside the water and I have um, a little bit of baking soda so you get that nice dark complexion when we bake it. And that's it. One minute on each side. Some people will go two minutes. I don't notice a huge difference when I do that interior of that bagel. So it can be, you know, a little different than like bread. It's got a nice crust to it, like the bagels that we love in New York. And we'll remove them, which I'll do right now. And then we'll do another top down to see exactly what we're going to make here. Let's go back to my 
other candidates, my bagels, right? And now what I'll do, I'll take some seasoning. I'm using everything seasoning, just kind of dump it on top because it's still a little wet from the um, from the solution, right? The water, just kind of cover them, coat them nicely here. Boom. Right, just like that. Give you a little bit more. We love the seasoning, right? And now I'm gonna bake these. These will go inside the oven. I'm gonna launch them right now. My oven's at pre 450. I'm gonna bake them for about 12 minutes. 425, I'm sorry, 425 on Fahrenheit. I'm baking for 12 minutes. I'll peek at the oven. I might want to rotate them a little bit. I only got two in there. I got another dozen to make. I'm going to bake those and get them nice and brown. And they're phenomenal. And the best time to seed is when we uh, remove those from the water solution. Some people use egg wash. I don't think it's necessary. I just clean like the water. We can see my seeds all stayed. No problem, right? Great. Good looking. Good looking bagels, right? They're awesome. Smell amazing too. So these have been these were baked right before class, so they're ready to rock and roll. Phenomenal. Let's get to some questions. Uh, let's see here. What is the hydration? Great question. So the hydration. This is definitely um, a lower hydration. Some bagel shops I know go down to like fifty percent. I'm at around fifty-eight to sixty. I think our recipe is sixty. I dropped it just a little bit, and all that means is the quantity of water to flour. Flour is your flour is your base. Let's say I used 1,000 grams of flour. Well, to make it 60% hydrated, I would use 600 grams of water. To make it 58%, um, I would use 580 grams of water. So you get the, the formula is pretty basic there. And for bagels, they're typically on the lower end, between uh, anywhere from between 50 and 60. Pizza dough, we do from 60 to 75. So you can see the difference. They're a little bit more dry, right? Makes sense. Um, so Tori's asking, what does the honey do in the water? Great question. We flavored it, right? We just flavored the water, gave it a little something. I use Mike's hot honey just to put in the water. And I should have made some with and without. Can you taste it? Maybe a very, very slight hint of it. But the idea is you can flavor water with basically anything that you're making. So we decided to do that. Uh, can you use barley malt instead of honey? Great. Elaine's asking, can I use barley malt? Yes, great question. I know a lot of people do that. They add, and some people add barley right into the dough as well. So great idea. Yes, you can. Um, sugar, I mean, you name it, you can put into that water. Uh, steel preheating. Okay, so Diane's asking, yes, 425 convection. My baking steel was preheating for a good hour before I launched. I love um, my steels to get really hot. And even if I'm baking at 425, you know, the baking steel is going to be 425 from edge to edge. It's going to really help. You can see the bottoms of my bagels. They're beautiful, right? If you're doing cookies or anything, I cook these right on parchment paper directly on my steel. Phenomenal. Love it. Um, do I ever use lye? I have not used it, but yeah, I know people have. Bruce, a lot of bagel, bagel makers, you might use that. Any different considerations for the salt? Any different considerations for salt bagels? No, that's a great question. Are you talking about the top, like um, topping with you know, sprinkles, crystals of salt, as opposed to the everything? Yeah, so I almost did that today. That's a really good question. I would just find some really nice big flakes that would look really cool on top. Um, they'll adhere really well with the bagel. It's almost like a glue that's on top and see, I didn't use anything to make these stick. Um, that's all it was, is the water. This is a, these are, I think, sesame seeds, poppy seeds, some garlic. It's it smell great. It smells like a bagel shop in here. Um, not related to the class, but do you have a mini steel for like a toaster oven? Tori, great question. We do have a mini steel called Baking Steel Mini. It's 11 and a half inches square. Actually, I have one because it's not hot. This is always on my stovetop. This is my baking steel mini. And it's a baking steel on one side and a griddle on the other. Phenomenal product. I make, you know, if I was going to make a bagel sandwich later, I might toast it on here or toast bacon and eggs, breakfast, etc. This also will fit inside of a Breville 
toaster oven. Um, I have one at my old, my house and we made this steel. It fits right inside. It's amazing. So it also fits over one burner and you can also make the pizza on it inside the oven. So I'm not sure what type of toaster oven you have. If you don't know the dimensions, give me an email at andres at bakingsteel.com and I can see if I can help. I missed the beginning. Do you have the dough recipe, flour, water, yeast? Yes, Joseph, I will share that in the email. For now, let's go through it. 500 grams of bread flour, 300 grams of water, six grams of sea salt, six to eight grams of cane sugar or brown sugar, one gram of yeast. I mixed. That was it. I let it sit. I need it pretty good. It's a dry dough, so you really got to hammer it a little bit. Uh, how about cinnamon? What's the trick? So, Stephen, great question. Um, cinnamon raisin bagels. The trick there would be to add some cinnamon. I don't know the quantities. I would guess 20 grams or so into the mixture. You're like, you know, I was adding salt and I was adding yeast. I would add cinnamon in at the same time. And that would give it that really nice cinnamon flavor. Maybe even some raisins. I'll drop some raisins in at that time. And then I'll knead my dough together. And then I'll have cinnamon raisin bagels. Outstanding idea. Uh, let's see. And thanks very hard to find salt. Yeah, that's a great question, Deborah. Good, really good. You're right. It is hard to find salt bagels. I don't know why they're not super popular because they would be delicious. Um, just again, my thing would be to go find some nice flakes of salt, some big flaky ones. How would you change that for pumpernickel? Oof, John, great question. Well, I would use the rye flour. I just don't know what the formula is. They probably you could probably look it up. I'm not sure how much rye it would take to make that a pumpernickel um, and what other ingredients might be, but we could look that up on Google pretty easy to see, but I would follow the same exact formula, you know, 60, 55 to 60% 60 hydration and add your um, your flowers in. Do you have to alter water for whole wheat flour? That's a really great question. Yes and no. I If I was making whole wheat bagels, I use 500 grams of bread flour. I would substitute in 20% of wheat flour, whole wheat flour. So in other words, I would use 400 grams of bread flour and 100 grams of whole wheat flour. Anything more in the whole wheat tends to really get dry and you need to really adjust the water content. I have found it to be almost too dry. So what we do is we substitute in just a little bit of that flour to give it that whole wheat um, flavor. And 20% is a pretty good number to make that happen. Oh, that's great. So Diane, what oven rack? So I'm making bagels. I've got two steels in my oven. I have one on the top shelf, one on the bottom. For my bagels, I'm using the bottom steel. Um, easier access for me to get in and out. I guess, especially teaching a class, I just use the bottom steel. I don't need any broiler. I don't want to use the broiler. All that heat's coming from below. In fact, you can take a, let's, let's take a peek inside the oven, see what they look like. I mean, four minutes left. We can see it's already getting some really nice color, right? Aren't those awesome? Can you look back there? Be careful, right? Wow. That's pretty awesome, guys. Let me just follow. You can see they're not, not quite there, but they, they're getting it, right? So I might want to rotate them to the last part of the bake here. Here with them up. Let's see, I use parking paper. It's easier. They look amazing, don't they? It smells amazing too. So I'm finding those things to be done in about um, about 12 minutes at 425, which is pretty pretty fast, pretty awesome. And again, see the color of these, really beautiful. It'd be so good. Let's see what else we got here. Um, water preference tap. Oh, Deborah, great question on the water. So. I have reverse osmosis water here in my studio. It tastes amazing. It tastes like just so pure to me. So all of my cooking, all of my doughs are made using reverse osmosis water. It's the water I drink. It's the water I prefer to cook with. And I would recommend the same for anybody. You know, drink the water. If you love it, use that to cook. So 
depending on what you have. When I first moved in here, I didn't have a water filter. So I would actually literally be buying filtered water, box water and using that. Um, for now, I'm on, I think this is on uh, town septic in here, sewer. I'm not sure the water is that great. Yeah, it's great. Do you need to place them on the parchment paper or can you just place them directly on the steel? So great question. I, when I remove them from the water bath, I place them directly on the parchment paper. You can see here, because now is the time I'm going to seed it. And I made, I don't know if you can really see here, but I made kind of a mess on my collar with all the seeds. Um, the, par the parchment paper does help uh, remove, I mean, keep the mess kind of consolidated, if you will. So I like parchment, especially when these are wet, they're going to make a little bit of a mess. Uh, I hope that answers that. Do you need to have two steels in your oven to be successful at baking breads? No. Amber, great question. I have two steels in my oven because I'm always baking multiple things. I like to have two steels in because I can do things faster. For bagels, like today, for example, I only use one of my steels. And that's typically what I do. I'm in here cooking by myself. Multiple steels come in handy if I'm making a lot of stuff. Like, for example, I might make two batches of bagels after this Zoom. And I'll probably use both layers of steels just because I can make more that way. But typically, if I'm by myself, I'm making one batch of something. One steel is all I need. Does the job. What about sourdough recipe? Nancy, great question. I don't have a sourdough bagel recipe. I'm going to pull these out here first. Um, this is oh gosh, yeah, these look amazing. They look so good. Let's see. Just out of the oven. Right? Beautiful. Hot, hot, hot. But they're amazing, guys. You can see them. Very proud. Very proud to make these. Um, smell amazing. Look amazing. Super pumped. Sourdough. I would make sourdough, again, adding 20% of my starter in and removing 50 grams of water and 50 grams of flour and substituting in my 100 grams of sourdough starter, which is typically 100% hydrated. So it's a wash. Does that makes sense. So th I've done this with, I haven't done it with bagels, but I've done it with English muffins and pizza dough. That's a really nice formula. Seems to work great. I have a mini steel and your first steel made. Does this work mini on top and regular steel on the bottom? Great question. Uh, John, Joan. So if I have, um, if I have, Two steels, and I have an original steel, and I have a mini steel. I mean, yeah, that might be makes more sense. I would probably keep my big, bigger steel on top, so when I launch into my oven, I'll have um, a larger area. Once that pizza is set and cooked after two or three minutes, I can move it down to the bottom steel and launch a new one on top. So that's how I would use the two steel strategy with the mini and the original. I hope that answers that. Uh, does Using one steel help with heat distribution when you have two levels of items cooking. Would you would, would having the one steel on top? Oh, great question. So if I have one steel and I'm making something else, having a steel inside your oven is like a battery inside of your oven. In other words, I've had some chefs buy steels from us that don't even make pizza, but they put our steels in their convection oven because the idea in a in a busy restaurant. They're opening and closing those convection ovens all day long. All the heat escapes. So having a baking steel inside your oven will actually help keep that temperature inside like the casserole plate that's on top of it. Even if the, the oven's open, you're still getting that really nice even heat from below, from the steel. So it will help maintain that heat much better than anything else. If I'm making roasted vegetables at home, I'll place my sheet tray right on top of my steel and I'll get the benefit of all that heat from below into my vegetables, if that makes sense. Or my potatoes, even my cookies and my, my bake. If I'm baking pies, I'll put my pie plate directly on top of my steel and I'll get the benefit of eating heat from below, getting rid of those soggy crusts. Uh, I hope that answers that, Steve. Um, I have several honeys blended with spices like cinnamon. Do you think it could provide a pleasant outcome or a funny taste? I've never boiled anything other than water and salt before adding honey is a new idea for me. Oh, interesting. Yeah. I mean, 
that you, that'd be a great experiment. If you've got some nice honeys, I would clearly add it into my water. It's not going to cost anything, right? It's going to give you some ideas of what can happen to the flavors when we just add a dash of something inside the water. I don't measure what I put in. I literally just squirted some Mike's hot honey into my water bath. Maybe I put like a tablespoon of uh, baking soda in, but I would clearly have fun experimenting with that. Be a great adventure. My steel lives in my oven on the bottom shelf. I move it around when needed. Eric, great idea. Yeah, that's smart. I um, keep it in there. You know, mine are in my oven all the time. It's going to be a battery inside. And if you decide you're making pizza, you want to use the broiler before you fire it up, move it to the top level. And then, um, but you can, yeah, shift it around, no doubt. Can you cut one open? Yeah, let's cut one open. Let's do it. Let me grab a knife. You grab one of my knives. I love these knives here. <clears throat> I'll cut, let's cut them. Let's cut it this way so we can kind of get an idea. Smells anyone with anyone with bagel cutters. Need some cream cheese too. Boom. You see that? Really nice. They're kind of dense, which is what we want, right? Smells good. Let's just give it a little taste since I got you guys all here. Tastes like a, a New York bagel. Incredible. I can't wait to give these to my kids later. They love bagels. Um I missed the solution that was on the stove. I have heard you mentioned honey, but oh, good. Sorry, dear. You finished chewing. So on my stovetop, I've got boiling water. I bring it down to a simmer. I add about a tablespoon of baking soda. And to me, I just add a little bit of Mike's hot honey. I have some in my in my cabinet here. I added some Mike's hot honey. The idea is that water is now going to have a little bit of flavor. Not a lot, a little bit, a hint, right? It might just... It might kiss this this bread dough on the outside, just a hint of it, just to kind of give it a nice, can I taste it? I can taste the seeds. I can taste the garlic. Not a lot of the honey, but man, it tastes incredible. And, and you guys can make bagels like this at home. Oh man, it's just fun. And maybe, maybe some uh, breakfast, some pizzas too. That'd be fun too, wouldn't it? It's really good, Elaine. It's so good. Doing your pizza tonight, wife request. I love it. I didn't get your name, but that's a nice request by your wife. You can freeze pizza dough. Can you freeze the bagels? When? Ah, great question. Susan, yes, freeze. Dough freeze is amazing. Just not super long, 30 days. I was going to freeze the bagels. That's a good question. What would I do? I would likely freeze it um, probably just in the bulk to be honest, I'd probably just freeze it in bulk. I mean, I could make my individual portions and then freeze, I guess, but I would probably just freeze it after I mixed it and fermented it for 24 hours. I would just put the dough into, I'd wrap it with plastic wrap and then maybe a baggie on top of that and boom, freeze it for up about 30 days. Pizza bagel would be great. I know I might be doing that tomorrow. I have a feeling pizza, pizza bagels. Um, I would want to try the... Water, well, thanks for the idea of the hot honey. Yeah, great, Janet. Yeah, definitely try it. And then add something else too. I mean, it's like just poaching, right? We're poaching, trying to get, extract some flavor from the water. Thank you, much better than trips to New York. Yeah, I know, Deborah. making bagels is really fun. It's, it's an extra step or two, but you know, the, the result, I mean, kind of fun shapes too. I intentionally made one hole bigger. This one's tiny. Um, this one's like just off center, right? Just have some fun with it. Looks good in pictures. Taste amazing. Um, what is the limit of bagels you can bake on the steel? I don't want to cook too many at one time. Amber, great question. Um, I did I did a batch of three this morning. I did two with you guys here today. Um, you could easily fit six to eight on top. Again, the magic is going to be getting it into the oven. I mean, you could even put these on a sheet tray if that's easier to launch. For you i just want to do directly on the steel i like how the bottoms come out directly on the steel six to eight no problems 
I wrap mine individually in the in the press and seal wrap, and I never have freezer burn or frost. Oh, perfect. How long do you freeze for, Janet? Any um, any time frame? When the bagels come out of the freezer, power level four for about two minutes, depending on your microwave. Ooh, eat immediately. Oh, you oh. So yes, yeah, that's a good question. If I'm if I'm freezing the bagels, this is like freezing bread. Great idea. Just freeze the bagels. They're amazing. They'll thaw out in no time at the counter. They're great. Up to six months. Wow, that's incredible. Is that the dough or the um, actual bagel itself? So the bagel itself, yeah, you can freeze that for, I thought someone had asked about the dough. If you're ba freezing bagels, you could freeze these, yeah, for several months. No problem. Do you prefer 24-hour ferment at room temp or in the fridge, which would be much slower? Ah, great. So, Joe, I did a 24-hour um, room temperature ferment for all my baking this week and love the results. I feel like there's really nice flavor in the dough. It responded really well. It had some, it just, it felt great, cooked fast. If I knew, like, for example, I knew I was doing a, a bagel class today. And if I made that dough cold overnight or the dough was cold, it would have taken longer to, to proof. So at room temperature, it seems to spike a little faster. So that's why I kept it at room temp. But I also do this for my pizza dough. Sometimes if I'm doing a 24 hour dough, just keep it at room temp the whole time. And it really works beautifully. Uh, cooked press and seal is the bomb. Yeah, I like, I like that. And Maxine, when you send the recipe, will you include the substitution amount for the sourdough bagels also? This is what I thought the class was about. Your bagels look amazing. The New York gal cannot resist a good bagel. Yes. Um, and I'm going to, Maxine, I'm going to give you my, I'm not sure what the email team has in store, but here is my email. If you could send me one, I'll, um, I, and that goes for anybody, any questions, email me. Uh, I'll get back to you. Might be slow, but I'll get back. Um, email me that to Maxine and I'll get you that recipe. I think the email that we have is already drafted up. And so it's probably already going to be sent once this video's chopped up and goes along with it. I hope that answers that. Anybody else have any questions? Amazing, you guys. Thank you. Thanks for being here again, Anders, at the studio. Bagels were a huge hit. They're so fun to make. I urge you all to try them. It's nice. Have them on the weekends. Get some cream cheese. You guys, totally rock. Grateful for this class. We'll, um, we'll see you guys again in a few weeks. We're doing a pizza hangout and can't wait. Thank you, guys. Thank you. You rock, Deborah. Thank you, guys. Amazing. Thank you.